Hello, I am Callum. I am an architecture student at the University of Cambridge. In this video, I am going to share with you my experience at interview as well as what I did to prepare for my interview at Cambridge. To give you an overview, this video is going to be split up into four distinct parts. Firstly, a brief summary of my entire experience. Secondly, more in depth specifically about the two interviews that I had. Thirdly, about the assessment that I had, and fourthly, exactly what I did to prepare. So, firstly, a brief summary of my experience at interview. My college is Trinity Hall. It is the fifth oldest college in Cambridge and was founded in 1350. It's also one of the smallest in the entire university. I went up the day before my interview and stayed in college accommodation the night before. That was actually a really great experience because I got to meet other applicants, I got to have a bit of a look around the college, a really good night's sleep, some supper in hall, and not to mention just a general feel for what it would be like to actually live there. Then, on my actual interview day, I had two interviews and an assessment that were split up in into a written part and a drawing part. Those three things were spread across the day and actually in my case with several hours in between so I was able to get out and about, have a look around the college as well as the entire of the town of Cambridge as well which was quite fun. There was also no dress code, I was told to wear simply what would make me feel comfortable for my interview. <laughs> So in both interviews there were two interviewers and I was given the names of them before I arrived so I actually out of curiosity looked at who they were, what departments they were from. The first interview were two architecture lecturers specifically and the second two I remember thinking that they were from other departments and so I kind of assumed that that interview would be a sort of college and wider life interview and the first one would be a subject specific one. As you'll come to see that wasn't actually the case at all. I had to take a portfolio of my personal artwork to both of the interviews. If you are interested in seeing an accepted Cambridge portfolio for architecture, then I have actually made a video already showing you everything in my own portfolio that I took with me to interview. You can see that by either clicking the link in the description, or there is a link at the end of this video to my three video series about my application process to Cambridge. So in my first interview, this was entirely focused on my portfolio, just flipping through each page and talking about my thoughts behind each of the various projects. However, it was entirely led by my interviewers rather than by me. Now, that was just my experience, I don't know if that's always the case, but I think it is a good time to remind you of the thing whereby just because you think some projects are your best work doesn't mean that the interviewers were, and it was definitely a thing that I experienced, that they stopped on things that I thought were less good and flipped straight past things that I thought were much better, so that's definitely a slightly weird experience and a bit frustrating. However, it was in all quite a good experience and it was definitely a discussion rather than like a Q&A or a grilling even. I, I very much felt that I got to kind of openly discuss backwards and forwards my thoughts behind the projects and also because my portfolio was quite personal it became a really good sort of launch pad to talk about my life in general and at least that made me walk away from the interview feeling quite good about it even if the overall experience was of course still very nerve-wracking indeed. Then in my second interview we also flipped through my portfolio but a little bit more quickly and the rest of the interview was then about other questions in architecture in general. I also had to talk about my opinion on arch on certain architectural spaces however this was very much guided by the interviewers and like I didn't feel that I had to have any specialist knowledge of places before that interview. So this was the interview that I assumed would be about college and wider life as I'd heard my might be the case. However, this was not the case at all. Um, the interviewers not only had a very impressive knowledge of architecture, but also managed to link in some of their own subject areas as well in order to sort of challenge me out of my comfort zone a little bit. My personal experience at interview told me that it seemed to be less about testing my architectural knowledge and more about having an academic discussion and challenging some of my thoughts and interests. I think one of the big differences between school and university in terms of learning is whereas at school you can sort of learn up to a maximum point, you have you have a fixed syllabus and certainly in things like science subjects if you know everything on that syllabus up to that maximum point you know it, it can be possible to get 100% on your exams just by knowing all of that stuff. At university, that's not the case. You're learning from a minimum upwards with no ceiling, with no limit on the amount that you could know. And certainly in these interviews, I feel like there isn't a sort of certain right amount of kind of architectural knowledge you could have at this point. Of course, you don't study architecture at school and you're certainly not expected to know a great deal about the subject. However, you are expected to be interested. And, you know, even if you've read 10 different books on the subject already, all that's going to happen is your interviewers will still know more and they'll still challenge you further and above that point of learning. So 
I personally think it's much better to just kind of focus on what you're really interested in and then find a way to talk about that in your interviews. At least that was my experience and though I did read a few books, I didn't actually have to draw upon a lot of that knowledge and it wasn't really that useful anyway. Of course, this may not be the case in your interview and you should not take my advice as the be all and end all because I think every interview is going to be completely different. <laughs> So then the assessment. This entire thing was an hour long, split up into the two parts I've already said. Half an hour for writing, half an hour for drawing. The writing test was essentially a quite short essay on a fairly broad but topical architectural question. At the time of my interview, I actually hadn't written an essay or any sort of serious writing other than maybe my personal statement for about a year and a half up until that point. So it was certainly quite a daunting task to me and I was concerned that I might need to have lots of reading under my belt in order to provide adequate references in the essay. However, I actually only ended up using a few simple references of more familiar buildings, such as places I'd lived or buildings I'd just experienced walking around London, my hometown. This is because I found it much easier to talk about the way the spaces sort of impacted my feelings and I found that much easier to link back into a convincing argument about the question that I was given. Then the second part was a drawing test. I was simply asked to draw the space around me. So I did a simple perspective sketch of the room that I was in. Now, before my interview, I had been given some general guidance from my college about preparing for the interview. And that included some stuff about sketching from life and carrying a sketchbook around. So I followed that advice. I started an observational sketchbook, one that I simply carried around everywhere with me, especially when traveling and things. I just like to quickly sketch the odd building every now and then from time to time. In fact, that became so useful to me that I actually took that sketchbook with me to the interview and showed with my portfolio. So in terms of preparation, what did I do to prepare for my interview? Well, the first thing I did was spend a lot of time reading the various university websites, the University of Cambridge itself, the Department of Architecture, the course website, the my own college's website. There are quite a few different things around the University of Cambridge's sort of web structure that can be quite useful to read. Amidst some of those sites, I managed to find a suggested reading list for the interviews themselves. So I went down that list and bought a load of books from there. The Architecture of Happiness by Alain de Botton. A Guide to the New Ruins of Great Britain by Owen Hatherley. Towards a New Architecture by Le Corbusier. Modern Architecture Since 1900 by Willem J. R. Curtis. And Cities and People, A Social and Architectural History, which is by Marc Girard. Honestly, buying all of these books might have been a little bit overkill in my opinion, not least because I barely managed to read half of them in time for my interview, but also I never directly referenced any of them at all. However, the bits of them that I did read were useful in terms of stimulating interest, and certainly since the interview, as I've continued to do architectural research and just reading about general current affairs, I have come back to some of the information there, and certainly all of those books I'm pretty sure are on the first year reading list anyway. With that in mind, I did find these two books particularly useful and a little bit easier to approach as well. I will actually recommend this book, How to Read Buildings, if you're looking for something a little bit simpler that'll just give you a very brief summary of all of the architectural styles, things you can become aware of. Links to all of those books will be in the description. Please do click on those to have a look for yourself. In terms of other, maybe more practical things you can do to prepare, I really recommend following architectural magazines like Design, the RIBA itself, as well as sort of your favorite architectural practices on Instagram. I know obviously it's a social media, However, since architecture is fundamentally a visual art form, Instagram is actually a really great way to kind of very briefly see kind of lots of snippets of different projects. Then if you see something that catches your eye and it's on, for example, the zine, they will have a blog post about it. They will have a further article you can then go and look for and read it if you see something interesting. Then from that point, you might kind of read it and say, oh, that's, that's really interesting. I wonder who the architect is. And then before you know, you're reading about that architectural practice. And just by doing stuff like that, suddenly you're kind of expanding a bit of your reach and exploring what your interests might be and doing that sort of made it much easier for me to talk about those sorts of things in the interview not to mention it is interesting then another thing you can do is practice interviews so i was actually lucky enough to find someone in my school who could do a mock interview with me they put together a list of practice questions about architecture sat me down in a room and grilled me on all of those questions now that was actually nothing like my real interview however it was still very useful Here's why. It's one thing reading through questions and thinking about your answers to them, but it's a totally different thing when you're put on the spot in a formal situation under pressure. So 
Even if those questions aren't anything like it, you might not have done many interviews in your life yet at all. And even if you have, it, you know, you can never have enough practice. So I do think it's very beneficial just to practice being in that situation, in that formal environment, as I've said. If you're not lucky enough to have anyone in school, you could even just ask your parents to do this for you. And you can even put together the questions yourself, but still just practicing being able to kind of think on the spot and being able to come up with a coherent answer under pressure, I found to be very useful, especially if you're the kind of person who can get quite nervous in interviews. This is a really good way of practicing to calm those nerves a little bit. You can definitely find sort of potential practice questions all over the internet and if you want some things that are useful to think about then of course the standard who's your favorite architect what's your favorite building and why do you like the architecture of your hometown and why straight lines or curved lines in buildings what is a new technology in architecture that really interests you are there any buildings that you think are really ugly <laughs> what do you want to see change in the future of architecture these are just a couple of examples off the top of my head. They're not questions from my interview and they're not meant to be potential questions at all. This is just the sort of thing that could be quite useful to start thinking about. Get used to thinking about what your interests are and challenging your perspective. Okay, so in conclusion, please remember that no two interviews are the same and certainly everybody's experience is going to be slightly different. So with that in mind, I hope you found it helpful listening to my personal experience at interview. If there is one thing that you take away from this video, then please let it be this. Of course, it's an incredibly nerve wracking experience, no matter how prepared you are. So my advice would be worry less about trying to have an encyclopedic knowledge of all of the architectural periods, dates and important architects. Rather, just spend a lot of time focusing on what really interests you, read a lot about your interests and buildings and projects that excite you, and try and talk about them in your interview. If you have a genuine interest and you're talking about stuff genuinely, then that will really come across in your interview and you don't have to try hard to do that. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see my portfolio, click over here to the right. There's also a video in that series about my personal statement and how I wrote it. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Do let me know in the comments which college you are applying to and I hope you have a great day.